Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be looking at the SwitchBot Hub 2, which is a replacement for the SwitchBot Mini Hub. The Hub 2 brings eight upgrades to the Mini, the most notable of which is Matter compatibility. This allows the Hub to connect to Matter compatible devices, such as Apple HomeKit, and allows you to control the SwitchBot range of devices through Apple HomeKit. This is a huge upgrade as it opens up the Apple ecosystem to all the SwitchBot devices. Plus, you get a few extra features thrown in for good measure, which we'll cover later on. So with full disclosure, this product was sent to me by SwitchBot, but the views and opinions are all my own and SwitchBot has not reviewed or influenced any of my opinions in any way. So let's dive on in and have a look at what you get in the box. The Hub 2 comes with a relatively small box. On the front, it shows that it's compatible with Amazon, Google, Siri shortcuts, and since it's Matter compatible with HomeKit, IFTT, and Samsung SmartThings. The unit has two radios built in for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to allow it to connect to your home network, plus an IR blaster to control non-smart IR remote-based devices. It has a built-in thermometer and humidity sensor that it displays on the front screen. There's also some touch sensitive buttons to allow for various functions plus scenes to be launched. Inside the box, you get a support card in case you need further assistance. A comprehensive manual, which is good and takes you through all the functions of the device. There's a USB-A power adapter, which outputs two amps at five volts, which is nice to see when a lot of manufacturers are dropping these. You get a USB-A to USB-C cable with integrated temperature and humidity sensor. This is excellent to see, as a lot of sensors these days, especially the devices with an externally powered, include these sensors into the main body of the unit. By doing this, their sensor reading can be have issues due to the electronics in the device artificially heating the device and causing the readings not to be accurate. There are two 3M double-sided stickers, one to attach the main unit to a wall and the other to secure the temperature and humidity sensor. Again, a nice touch to allow for these different mounting options. The main unit is made of ABS plastic and is really light at 63 grams, with dimensions of 80 millimeters by 70 millimeters by 23 millimeters. The USB-C cable plugs into the back of the unit. And there is a cutout on the kickstand to allow for the wire guide so that it does not wobble. On the front, there are two touch sensitive buttons that we'll come to later on plus a large temperature display and the humidity. Hidden beneath the screen is a light sensor that can provide illuminance measurements, plus an IR blaster that can be programmed within the app. So the SwitchBot app is available in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Links in the description below. Once you've downloaded and logged in, let's add the Hub 2. Turn on your Hub 2. In the app, Hit the plus icon in the top right hand corner of the screen. Press add a device. Select your hub too. The app will ask you to press the two capacitance buttons on the front of the screen for two seconds. The LED will stop flashing and the unit will make a noise. And then you can press next. Now, if you are connected to the 5 GHz network like I am, it will tell you the device cannot connect to 5 GHz network and ask you to select your 2.4 GHz network and to provide it with the Wi-Fi password. Use the drop-down and insert your SSID. Once you've entered in your credentials, press Next. Speaking of internet connections, if you're not running a VPN or a virtual private network as it's called and want to be protected on the net by masking your IP, then check out NordVPN in the links in the description below for a great deal in 60% off. Now you can give the unit a name and an optionally provide it a room location, although you can do this at later if you prefer and press save. The app will confirm that it's been completed and prompt you with an OK. Now, if you've already added this skill to Amazon, you'll see that a prompt will appear on the top of the screen, advising you that the Hub 2 has been added. Press the OK to continue. Now that the Hub 2 has been installed, you will see it on the front screen of the app. At this point, you might see a small icon under the banner temperature and humidity. This signifies that there is a firmware upgrade outstanding. As this is a rapidly evolving product, it is recommended that you press this icon and upgrade your Hub 2 to the latest firmware version, but we'll hold on that part and come back to this at a later date. 
the main screen will show you the temperature, which is shown to one decimal place, which is nice. The room humidity and the room light levels. The light level is shown as a level and there is no direct correlation to illuminance levels, but maybe this will be added in a future by SwitchBot. Pressing on the Hub 2 tile brings up the readings and also the setup controls. By pressing on the temperature tile at the top brings up the graphs, which are scrollable over days and also pinchable to compress for longer time frames. Under these are three additional graphs that you can bring up. Absolute humidity, dew point, vapor pressure deficit, with explanations as to what these represent. You can also load more data, export the data, or clear the data. It doesn't say how long this data is to be held for, or where it's actually stored. But I'd assume on this device, and considering the size of the data, it will probably outlive the device. Back on the home screen, you can add remote control devices. This allows you to copy from another hub which is a great time-saving feature, especially if you are upgrading from the mini hub to the hub 2. Alternatively, you can pick from a selection of device types. When selected, you have three options, of which smart matching will be the most useful. This allows the hub 2 to sample the power on command sent from your remote and to provide a selection of templated remote controls that you can select from to match the functionality of your remote. However, there is an option to select your remote control commands by manufacturer if your dog ate your remote control or your children have hid it in a special unknown place. The third and final option, if all else fails, is to learn the button presses individually. Trust me, you do not want to go down this path if you can avoid it, as it takes a long time. So let's try this out with my TV remote control. Select Smart Matching. Follow the instructions on the screen. Press Start Matching. Now press the power on your remote control. As you can see, the Smart Hub has found three templates that will work for this remote control. If you press Got It, and now we press the power button on the screen. As long as the Hub 2 is within the distance of the television, the television turn should turn on. It will now confirm if it has worked or not worked. If template 1 has not worked, it will move on to template 2 and then subsequently on to template 3. In my case, this was working on template 1 and it made an exact match straight away. Now we can give a name to the device that we are controlling. In this case, it's my lounge TV. And press done when you're finished. We can now save this, and we're now presented with a full remote control for your television. I'd suggest that you test this and make sure that all of the buttons work successfully. And if not, repeat the process and pick a different template. Now let's move into the settings. These are available from the cog in the top right hand corner. The first option allows you to set the name and the room for the Hub 2. Next down we have the Wi-Fi settings. In the Wi-Fi settings we are presented with the Wi-Fi SSID, the MAC address, the IP address of the actual device and the status of the Wi-Fi to see if it's connected to the network or not. Note that the only thing that can be changed at this point is the Wi-Fi SSID, the network that you're connecting to, and the password for the SSID. Next we have the display settings. We have data source for the hub. It says it's new. If we select this, it tells us that we need to upgrade our firmware on our device. So let's do that now. Press the OK button, proceed to the upgrade, and wait for it to upgrade. Once completed, it will display the upgrade has been successful. Press the finish button. Data source now is available. Let's select that. This new feature seems to be that we will be able to display on the unit, not only from this data hub, but we can also select a different SwitchBot hub too. Since we've only got one hub, we can actually X out of this and move back. We can turn on the indicator light. We can have it so that the lights either always stay on or that it only lights up when it's under control. We can display the temperature humidity readings. We can light up or turn off the buttons. And we can also have it so it adjusts the brightness based on the illuminance in the room. There's also a feature to turn off the sounds. We can also activate a do not disturb mode. When turned on, this will dim the display and will silence all the sounds. If you wish to see the temperature or the humidity, then press the on button and they will be displayed. By selecting this, you can actually set a date range of when the unit will go into do not disturb. In the desired conditions section, you can set ideal conditions. These could be for a temperature range. When it goes with outside of a temperature range, the unit will flash or will beep at you accordingly. And you can set these for humidity, absolute humidity, dew point, or VPD alert. The next section is calibration. 
I found that the temperature and the humidity out of the box for the unit is very accurate and I didn't need to calibrate the unit for either measurement. However, if you do find that it varies by more than about one degree on the temperature or out by more than five degrees on the humidity, then I'd suggest you reach out to SwitchBot support as you might have a defective unit. Cloud services, as the name suggests, allows you to link into Google Assistant, Amazon, IFTTT, or through to Siri shortcuts, which is Apple HomeKit. There's a section in relation to NFC tags. As far as I've seen, this is specifically for SwitchBot tags and does not utilize across any other types of tags. It's not a problem, but it's something to be aware of. The final section is about matter setup. This is in beta at this point in time. This is a whole video on its own, so I won't be covering it in this point. Needless to say though, the introduction of matter into this device allows it now to connect to Apple HomeKit and that's a huge benefit. All other SwitchBot devices to this point in time have not been accessible through Apple HomeKit. With the introduction of the hub and making it matter compliant means that now the hub can now connect to your Apple HomeKit and therefore all of the SwitchBot products that are available become available to you to be controlled. Finally, there are two touch button controls. These have labels of on and off, and you can control the illuminance of these in the settings. Out of the box, these turn on and off the display of the temperature and humidity. However, you can associate a scene with these buttons. Let's go and create a scene now and associate it with the button. Go back into the home screen. In the top right hand corner, press the plus icon. Let's add a scene. Let's give the scene a name. Toggle TV power. We'll add an action. We'll pick a smart device and we'll leave the notifications on and we'll add the quick scene to our home screen. Now we have the option to test our scene, but in this case, we'll just save it. As you can see, in our quick scenes, we now have toggle TV power. Let's go into our hub. On the touch buttons at the bottom, press add scene. We're going to select our scene. We're going to press save. Now, if we press our on button on our remote control, our scene will play and we will turn on the television. Likewise, if we press the same button again, because we are toggling the power, it will turn the TV power off. We can add another scene to the other button as well. The SwitchBot Hub 2 is a large and welcome move forward in technology compared with the Mini Hub. The inclusion of the display makes it more into a useful device with good aesthetics as opposed to a mini hub. This means it's a welcome addition to the living space as opposed to another nondescript box with flashing lights. This means its IR functionality becomes useful, not to mention with the doubling of the IR range means it can control devices much further away, up to 15 meters. That said, the mini hub still serves a purpose, but can now be maybe moved to a less prominent place in the home and still provide years of great service. Bringing matter to the device future-proofs it and makes it compatible with the Apple ecosystem, which again opens up a wide range of devices that can now be used with the Apple HomeKit. If you're interested in a setup and control of these devices through Matter and with the SwitchBot Hub 2, then let me know in the comments below. Now, one thing that we have not covered is Home Assistant integration. And the reason for this is that it's a whole separate video as it's not as simple as it probably should be. That might account as to why there are only 480 active instances using the SwitchBot integration. But I'm sure those smart guys at SwitchBot are looking in how to make this integration simpler. Hence, making sure that you keep your firmwares upgraded to receive those new features. In the meantime, there are ways to integrate the SwitchBot 2 with Home Assistant. So wait for the video that will be coming out shortly. So what do you think of the SwitchBot Hub 2? Is this an upgrade and a replacement or a new addition to your smart home? Are you holding off for a simpler home assistant integration? Does the matter support tip it over the line and make it a must buy? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, see you on the next one.